Welcome to the Pyramid Insider. My name is Tyler Patner, and today we're going to be talking about the Avenge X from Air Venturi versus the Avenger. What makes it worth more money? Uh, should you be looking to upgrade from an Avenger? Or if you're looking at an Avenger, should you just jump right into an Avenge X? We're going to answer as many of those questions as we can today. So there's a lot to unpack here. Obviously, the Avenger, when it came out in 2020, was very, very popular right away. Obviously, a user-adjustable, tunable platform that shoots really, really well, has a lot of nice features built into it. Uh, current retail price on this is $350. Now, the Avengex, this is the tube synthetic model. This is kind of the base level version of this gun, and it's coming in at $499, $500. So, why the price difference, right? Kind of built on a lot of the same features. Let's talk about, go through systematically uh, and talk about what those upgrades are and what makes this gun, uh, in my opinion, still a great value even at that higher price point. Let's start at the front of both guns. Uh, as many of you know, if you're an Avenger owner or you've paid any attention to it, you know this is not threaded to accept a moderator. So a lot of you guys purchased this Donnie FL extender, uh, which also centers the barrel, but gives you those nice half 20 threads uh, so that you can add the moderator of your choice. It does add a little bit of length, but this is about a $45 upgrade or so. Uh, so keep that in mind when we start going through this here because the Avenge X has those half 20 threads built in at the end there of the shroud. Now, in addition to that, if I can get this to come out, yep, we do have kind of the same system here. So it does actually capture the barrel, centers it, and you do have a little built-in baffle stack as well to help with some of that noise reduction. Uh, so something you do not need to upgrade out of the box. Now, of course, both rifles feature a quick disconnect fill fitting. The cool thing about the Avenge X, which is not really applicable to this conversation, but uh, you can swap this gun over from this tube to a bottle. The bottle also has a quick disconnect with the same threaded cover on it. So uh, that's kind of unique out there. It's an inline fill system, uh, but quick disconnects on both guns, which is great. Moving back to the next kind of significant piece here are the barrel bands on these guns. Now, the barrel band on on the Avenger is actually connected through the stock to this Picatinny rail, which is kind of a molded in piece that snaps in between the two stock pieces there. Uh, but you don't have anything separating that barrel band kind of from mounting this bipod or other things influencing the gun potentially, like a, a shooting bag or something like that, a rest you might be using. The great thing about the Avenge X is that they've integrated uh, a couple O-rings into this uh, barrel band system, one for the air cylinder and also one for the shroud. Now what that's gonna allow you to do is free float your barrel or your air cylinder if you'd like to do that. The tube is set up, the, or the bottle version rather is set up the exact same way so you have the option to free float things which is great probably more something you target shooters out there will do but in addition to that I'll flip the gun over here and you'll notice there's this through hole right about here that is where the barrel band actually attaches through the stock so it's not actually connecting through this rail piece so mounting something like a bipod or throwing this on a bag really isn't going to influence point of impact or any of those things uh, that you may possibly see with the Avenger. Now sliding back even further, this is kind of a small thing, uh, but your pressure gauges. A lot of you out there have said, uh, you know, you don't, you have trouble reading the print that's on the sides of this action, uh, and the gauges can be a little bit tricky to read on the Avenger. But with the Avenge X, you have actually two new gauges. So the blue gauge says regulator on it, uh, which is awesome. And the red gauge on the right hand side of the action says fill pressure. So you know which gauge is which, it's very clear, uh, and the markings are a bit more clear as well. So you have bar and PSI markings on these gauges. Very simple to use. That's a small little upgrade thing that uh, that they've done here. Um, but let's jump over to the regulator because that's a big one. Now the Avenger regulator, obviously externally adjustable, made out of brass, works really well. Uh, you can go from about 12 to 1400 PSI all the way up to 3000 PSI. Uh, 
procedurally, the Avenger and the Avengex are the same. So you're not going to go down in pressure uh, while there's air in the gun, but you degas it, then you can go down. You can go up to 3,000 PSI while there's air in the gun, of course. Uh, but the upgrade here on the Avengex is a stainless steel regulator. Now, this is handling pressures above 250 bar a lot better than this brass does. And I'm also not seeing nearly any reg creep out of this. Now, I'm not saying I saw a ton out of our Avengers, uh, but you do occasionally get one. It's something that happens with a lot of regulators out there, adjustable or not cheap budget expensive i mean they all creep at some point in some way shape or form but this stainless one is holding up a lot better in my experience thus far than this brass does so just something to keep in mind and the great thing also is that this stainless version does kind of go backwards compatible can be fit into an avenger it's the same thread pattern and everything so if you do want to upgrade down the road once these become available as a spare part you are going to be able to upgrade your avenger to a stainless rag if you want to now, one thing that is a clear difference between the two guns actually on the Avenge X is our transfer port adjustment here. You have a two setting transfer port adjustment. Uh, basically you have your high power setting, so kind of your standard airflow, and then you can choke that off with the low power setting. And what this is gonna do, not only is it gonna give you very quick power adjustment, but it is also going to allow you to tune the gun for lower powers in a way you can't do with the Avenger. Uh, it's very difficult to drop like a 22 below 18 to 20 foot pounds. You are gonna be able to do that with ease with the Avenger. So that is a huge plus, especially for those of you that are like kind of barn hunting or hunting uh, in smaller spaces where you don't need so much power or you're shooting in the basement during the winter and you want to get a ton of shots. This is going to allow you to do that in a way that the Avenger simply did not. Um, another additional thing I should point out really quick, 180 cc's of air storage on the Avenger. This base tube model here that you're seeing comes with 210 cc's, still the same 4350 PSI fill pressure as well. So uh, you are going to get more shots naturally because you do have uh, that larger capacity air cylinder but it's not a huge difference uh, but really that tunability on that lower power side I, the shot count possibilities are phenomenal uh, and you guys are going to explore all of that when you get your hands on this now the next significant difference and this is a big one for me uh, the breech block here is all one piece of aluminum now with the avenger as we'll show you the Avenger is a cast block, so aluminum cast, but with a plastic cover and then metal rails screwed in on top. Now, there have been some interfacing issues I've seen with that, or if your screws get loose, things like that. That is not something you at all have to worry about with the Avengex because like I said, it is all one piece, very solid. It's not going anywhere. Picatinny rail only, so you don't have the dovetail option like you do with the Avenger. But I think most of you guys out there probably running pick mounts anyway, uh, but this is a awesome upgrade and a huge value add. Um, additionally, you'll notice there are two screws right here on the top of the breech. Those are actually your barrel retaining screws. The barrels are interchangeable here. So you can go from 177 to 22 to 25 with one gun. Uh, that's a barrel switch and the pellet probe. Obviously you'd need a magazine, single shot tray, whatever. Um, but the barrel setups are pretty affordable, honestly, about 70 bucks. It comes with the full shroud, the barrel, one magazine and the pellet probe, of course. So everything you need to do, this is going to take you five minutes or less to swap calibers. Then it's a matter of just kind of retuning and tweaking a little bit to get the numbers you want out of that new caliber with the pellet of your choice. Now, moving back just a little bit further still, uh, we do have our side lever, kind of very similar side lever set up there to the Avenger. Here's the big difference. For you lefties out there, you can swap this side lever over to the left-hand side. You can see that cutout right here with the AV on it. That is going to allow you as the user to swap it over. We can do it for you, certainly, um, but uh, Air Venturi's probably got a video on it, uh, or they will if they don't already. So this is gonna be something you can do step-by-step, -step, follow along with the video at home, and. If if you prefer to have that cocking lever on the left-hand side or if you're left-handed, uh, that is going to be available to you. And that is something that the Avenger cannot do at all. So uh, my opinion, again, big upgrade there. 
Now at the very back of the action, you do have your adjustable hammer spring uh, on this particular model. You see it right through that hole there. Um, uh, Allen key, it's really simple to do. The gun, the Avenger X is gonna come with all the Allen keys you need to touch pretty much everything on the gun, where uh, sometimes the Avenger, you know, you, you might need an extra Allen key or you need your own set if you wanna take the stock off or some of those things, but the Avenger X is gonna come with all that stuff. But you do have the same hammer spring adjustment system, so very easy to use, gonna give you kind of that fine tune tuning power adjustment. Uh, but the big upgrades outside of that on this synthetic stock version you're seeing here, adjustable cheek piece just with an Allen key from the bottom here. And you do have a similar butt pad adjustment that we saw on the Avenger Bullpup. So you just kind of pull it, get it into the position you like and you go ahead and lock it in there. So a really easy to use system. You can move it wherever you want pretty much within reason, um, but you can definitely see that there is a ton of value added to this Avengex platform that the Avenger uh, at its budget price point simply doesn't have or can't do. Um, there is one other thing I should mention here, and that is the magazines. So uh, the Avenger, as you all know, in 17722 comes with 10 round magazines. It comes with two of them and a single shot tray. The Avengex is going to come with a high capacity magazine and that standard capacity magazine, as well as the single shot tray. So you've got a big upgrade here in terms of shot capacity. It is a little bit larger as well. And of course, backwards compatible to the Avenger and all the other guns that it's gonna fit uh, that the Avenger mags normally fit. Um, so if I'm recalling correctly, 177, 20 rounds from 10. Uh, in 22, I believe it's 16, and in 25, it is a 13-round magazine versus the 10 rounds in 17722 and the 8 and 25. So a big upgrade that is going to come standard with your Avengex, but can certainly be purchased as an add-on for your Avenger. So a couple other small things to call out here. The stock materials, you have that nicer. Uh, we saw this with the Avenger Bullpup, uh, the nicer stock material here on the Avengex versus that slightly less expensive polymer that you have on the Avenger. Um, in addition, uh, the Picatinny rails at the bottom, you have plastic on the Avenger, metal on the Avengex. Uh, swivel studs, you do have your holes on the Avenger, but on the Avengex, you have those larger and again, metal uh, front sling mount and rear swivel so you've got your sling mounts as well. Uh, in terms of internal stuff that I can't physically show you, uh, 12cc plenum, 15cc plenum. So you're gonna be able to get a little bit more power out of the Avengex uh, and the trigger parts. So a lot of plastic uh, in terms of the trigger pack housing uh, on the Avenger, on the Avengex, it is all metal. So again, nice upgrades. That's what this is all about. Value for the dollar is still there, just like it was with the Avenger, but maybe even more so with the Avengex. Now that's about all the side-by-side the -side differences I can show you here, but what I can't show you here right now on the day is the modularity of this platform. You can turn this rifle that you see in front of you that you buy for $500 into seven other platforms, whether it be a bullpup, you wanna to go to a bottle, you can do that. You want a wood stock, you can do that. You wanna set it up as a tactical gun. You can do all of those things at your fingertips, all right? So you can change the style of the gun, you can change the air source, and you can change the caliber at will. All of that stuff is available to you. Uh, and that is what makes the Avengex an even greater value in my opinion. But as you guys, I hope can see, there's a lot of extra stuff or add-ons, things that are beefed up with the Avengex that uh, you just don't get with the Avenger for its budget price. Now, of course, the Avenger's not going anywhere. This is a great gun for the money uh, and it is going to stay that way without question. Uh, but Air Venturi bringing a lot of value with this Avengex and I think you guys are gonna love it. We just wanted to run this down because I know it's been a hot topic out there there. So appreciate y'all for watching. Uh, hopefully this answered all the questions you have. Sound off in the comments below if you have other questions for us, and I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, for The Insider, I'm Tyler Patner. Don't forget to like and subscribe in addition to throwing those comments below. We'll see you next time.